Hello everyone, welcome to this short video concerning OPL and different linear programming models. My name is Corey Messer, I just want to thank you for viewing this video. I based this project off of a company in Charleston, South Carolina. They produce water filtration systems and I just labeled it as the water project. So for a problem this description, this problem has multiple products, multiple resources, and we want to know how many products can be produced in-house with the given capacity constraints on the resources, but also meet the demand of the products. And then for the second portion, if the demand cannot be met with the in-house production, then we're going to outsource, and there's no constraints, but it is at a higher cost. Now, for the reason why I chose water mission and this IBM OPO example and I use it to modify for this project is because I was able to see that it could easily translate to water missions filtration systems and how they produce their filtration systems in their factory. Now as a comparison from the original example and how I changed it currently the model determines how many products there should be uh, produced in-house versus outsourcing depending on capacity and the resources in-house and then once I changed the example I wanted to determine how many products would also be produced in-house versus outsourcing but I wanted to have another constraint on in-house products that are outsourced so products that are used in-house but you have to outsource the product now the reason for this change, when I went down and visited Water Mission in September, their manufacturing process bottlenecked on the quantity of outsourced resources. So some of the PVC piping they need that they couldn't um, use injection molding themselves, they would outsource it, but their suppliers could only provide them with so much uh, resources that they couldn't keep up with the production rate. And so this new model that I created in OPL um, reflects the capacity constraint on the outsourced resources. Um, the picture here to the right is a, is a chlorinator. It's one of the water filtration systems that Water Mission produces. Now as a comparison between um, the data portion of the original OPL example and then how I created it, um, we had products, resources, they were working on a restaurant production and they were determining how many resources of flour and eggs they needed to produce all the different pastas and different dumplings and then on the right you can see that we have different resources to produce the chlorinator system then also the living water treatment system LWTS. Um, also to continue with this comparison there is different consumption demands capacity rates with the provided example and then I changed the demand and the capacity rates inside of OPO to determine how many um, products and resources I would need to fulfill the completed orders. Then also there's a cost aspect. Um, with the original example they were dealing with like small amount of cost. They were producing each dumpling and each portion of um, the different pastas. And then also on the right you'll see the in-house production of when I changed the model to producing the chlorinator and the LWS, LWTS systems. Then also, if you were to outsource it, um, these numbers here are estimations. Now, looking at the mathematical model of the original example, um, we have a demand and we have our constraints. Now, the OPL code is written as a minimization function, but when I wrote this as a, math, as a mathematical model, in order to minimize the whole um, the whole model with the the in-house resources then also what we're going to outsource I determined that it would be better to maximize all the um, production in-house because it's going to be cheaper and so you maximize all the in-house production then you outsource the rest that's why this has a maximization symbol or a maximization label versus when you see the OPL code here in a little bit it'll be a minimization and then going into how I changed the example, I changed a lot of the constraints, the uh, maximization, the different um, inputs 
to reflect water emission. And then also notice how um, this last constraint, I changed it to reflect the outsourcing. Um, so the products that are used in-house in to produce the final product, the different resources used in-house to produce the final product, um, those are outsourced. So here's the code. Um, I'll walk through this pretty quickly, then I'll show an, an actual like lab demonstration. On the left is the original code used in the example. You can see that um, they're minimizing the in-house cost and the out, um, outside cost of the outsourcing. And then this was all subject to how much consumption they were using of the in-house in-source uh, in-house resources and has to be less than or equal to the capacity that they can maintain. And then on the right you can see how I added the extra outsource consumption rate. So therefore while you're determining the um, in-house uh, use and the in-house consumption has to be less than or equal to capacity. You also have this extra portion outsource consumption and it has to be less than or equal to how much your suppliers can provide you. So this outsource capacity. And so these are both used to determine if you can meet the demand of production. If you can't then you have to outsource the whole product. So to go over here to OPL um, I'll do a couple demonstrations here. This original um, run will be the original example. Um, you can see here in this model uh, is the same code I just walked through. And then also here's the data file with the different, um, the fettuccine and the different restaurant mixes. And then their demand and inside outside costs. And so to come over here and run this, We can see here on the right that the model determined that we should produce 40 Kaluskis in-house and then outsource the rest, 200 and 300, with the given uh, consumption and capacity rates that we have. So now, to go into on how I changed this, I added the outsource consumption uh, rate for in-house resources, and then also to reflect water emissions uh, production and the products they produced. These here are in estimations and um, I labeled it. I gave it two different capacity constraints. That way you could see what it would look like if in order to fill the whole order how much capacity we would actually need. But on this first one, given these estimations of when I tour their facility just kind of off the top of my head when we run this you'll see that the model tells us to outsource all of the chlorinators, then we can produce one and a half um, of the living water treatment system. So we have enough for one, not enough for two, given these capacity constraints. Now if we go to change it, I'll show you how many we would need given this demand to produce all in-house. Go ahead and run it again. So now you can see that the model determined that in order to save the most amount of money, we should produce all of the chlorinators and all of the LWTS systems in-house. Now also, just for kicks and giggles, I contacted Water Mission recently and had them send me their bill of materials. And so it listed all the parts and how many um, resources they needed to produce both the chlorinator and the LWTS system. And it was hundreds and hundreds of parts. But I went ahead and added them all into OPL. And I really wouldn't recommend using OPL in this fashion as it was very tedious. Um, but in order to show that it does work, we can run this and given that we should make one chlorinator in-house and one living water treatment system out of house um, I could change the data file to make them both in-house or both outsourced 
but this does show that you can put all hundreds and hundreds of uh, parts into uh, OPL and run it as a linear program, but it was very tedious. So given uh, this, I uh, just want to thank you for watching this video. Um, if you have any comments, just uh, leave a below in the comment box or any questions, I'd love to answer them. Thank you.